Hello and welcome to Second Drafts Podcast, everything you need to write, edit, and publish your way. I'm Jeremy. I'm EJ. And today we'll be talking about reviews, why you need them, the chicken and egg scenario where uh, you don't always get reviews because there's no readers and you don't get readers because there's no reviews, (laughs) and what to do when you get a bad review. So, uh, reviews, obviously, to an author, like an especially an unknown self-published author, are really essential in getting people to find and purchase your book, um, and having a bunch of reviews, various ratings, opinions, uh, can mean the difference between a potential buyer and an actual uh, sales conversion, mm. as it were, to use some business lingo <laughs> and i think you had a little information on that side of things there ethan right oh yeah mm. there was a case study recently on bizarre voice where they actually revealed that their products with 20 or more reviews had a, a you know, something in the 80 percent higher conversion rate on average than those products without reviews mm-hmm. um now, just to define some of these things in case people don't know, conversions are, of course, people who look at the page and ultimately buy the product. And lost conversions are when people view the product and decide not to purchase. So the higher the conversion rate, a conversion rate, <laughs> the more people that actually visit the product page end up purchasing. So obviously that's good for sales. Yeah. It's a big sales term. You'll see that a lot uh, if you look at those types of things business side of things and i mean that's a huge difference just having some more reviews Mm -hmm. i mean they're not even specifying that the reviews are necessarily five star fantastic reviews it's just having reviews already makes people more willing to take a look and invest yeah i mean i even know like myself uh i'll always look at the reviews beforehand and kind of look at the average or look at and like the uh, most most helpful ones, and then I'll even sometimes look at the critical ones before I yeah. go ahead and buy. Exactly. <laughs> so these things are important reviews, I think, because um, of social proof, which I think is the entire point of reviews. Naturally, um, we people, we humans, we love finding, uh, you know, endorsements from others which makes sense to us we're we're herd animals we uh take others opinions very you know we often put a lot of stock in other people's opinions it makes sense for us Mm -hmm. so it's it's a big driver in um in what we do and what we consume that's why they get famous people in commercials (laughs) exactly (laughs) exactly you know how someone can just wear a particular kind of watch and get, you know, a couple of million dollars that year, or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, but there's also the other side of the coin. There's um, some people who point out that reviews aren't necessarily that important. Um, there's an article that we'll link to on the self-publishing review website where they point out that um, there are many different factors that go into how people find your book. And... Mm-hmm. Reviews are only one of many factors. If you think about it, that makes sense because reviews only <laughs> will only affect people once they see them. Mm-hmm. But in order to see them, they have to get to your page. And in order to get to your page, they first need to find your product or know about it somehow, which uh, that's a completely different thing. Um, so this article discussed things like keywords and categories, which are, of course all things that go into Amazon's algorithms for how they display things to you and which things potential buyers will see. So they also point out, mm, yeah? Well, yeah, I was just going to say, just even looking at, say, uh, Google, I I always think about it like, I know that it's probably because of my age, but uh, thinking about before Google and how people found web pages, right? And uh, it just almost seems mind-boggling how you could find these different uh, web pages before actually having a search engine to search for it, and almost kind of the yeah. same way with I think Amazon. Few people today can even imagine how it must have been a world without 
search, instant search. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. But, uh, you know, on Amazon side yes. of things, the same thing. Like, you'll, some people could even just go on the front page and see those bestsellers and then won't go any further. But, uh, trying to find the way to get your book found first is definitely important, but reviews are still obviously even more important once as they do find it. So, yeah, once they do find it, that's the whole point is to get them to your page. And once they're there, you kind of have to close the sale, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And um, your reviews will probably be the, the main factor in that. Um, also covers. Don't forget about covers. Yeah. <laughs> but speaking of Amazon, um, their star rating system recently changed in June, I think, mm -hmm. um, where they started to uh, take into account extra factors. It's not just a plain average of the stars anymore, as far as I understand. It uh, considers things like how old the review is, uh, how many people have marked the review as helpful, and uh, also verified purchases. That's becoming a very big thing for Amazon. Mm -hmm. And I can kind of understand it because there's there's been a lot of gaming of the system going on as far as I know, which <laughs> obviously they don't prefer. And um, reviews are being ranked, like uh, the Amazon algorithms are being more and more refined mm -hmm. to determine if the reviews ranking which is interesting actually <laughs> yeah well it definitely uh it seems to uh, encourage authors to look at those reviews and uh we'll discuss a little bit more later there but look at the ones that are actually from customers unsolicited sort of thing and taking any feedback that you can and applying it, it seems. Would you say that? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it can be useful for authors to, you know, keep an eye on what people are saying about their books and don't be afraid, I would say, to uh, work out enhancements and to, to find a way to deal with some of the criticism. Um, Small things like, you know, spelling and grammar and formatting. If people keep complaining that that's a problem. Um, one nice thing about Amazon and self-publishing in general is you can just go back and fix that if you want. Mm -hmm. It's They make it very easy. You just republish after you fixed it. And they even allow you to send out an email to everyone who had the book. Um, and they will be reminded that, oh, this book has been updated. And there you go. It's easier than ever to change and now when the reviews and the star ratings get balanced in favor of the newer ones it's actually a bit more fair it gives you a chance to improve your you know your products out there yeah so if like a, a one star two star review is a lot <laughs> older then it might even stop uh affecting your overall average after a while, it yeah, seems like... stop weighing so much. And if you improve, then the newer, better reviews will start weighing more, which is uh, perfectly fair, mm -hmm. I'd say. Definitely exciting, so... <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so now that we've gone over why reviews are important and looked at some of the uh, opinions on that, um, I think it'll be good for us to look at how you actually go about getting reviews. Um, in, there's a bit of a chicken and egg scenario in that you need readers to get reviews, also need reviews to get readers. As you said earlier, mm -hmm. it can be very frustrating. But um, I think in this regard, you've got a bit more uh, experience <laughs> than I do, and you've experimented a bit more with this. So uh, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, I, I, I kind of knew about the importance of reviews beforehand, but not so much uh, on the... Uh, actual backing with data beforehand and over time it just kind of reinforced that importance so I mean the first thing that I did there when I had the book out was uh, getting friends to read it and review like do a legitimate review still of course and uh, getting that feedback and stuff like that uh, I also tried to get family there but uh 
on two occasions, Amazon has actually remo removed the reviews from uh, family members. So uh, they don't... For you? For you personally? Yeah, for me personally. Wow. So, how, how do they know, I wonder? <laughs> I, I really don't know. I'm not too sure. Um, wow. It seems like there might be something going on with maybe the IP address or something like that. Uh, but basically with uh, one there, it was my dad. Uh, he did read the book and uh, published that review there. But uh, after, I think, like a week or something like that, or maybe a couple months, maybe, uh, I can't remember how long it was exactly, but it was eventually removed. And then wow. uh, with my spouse's mother, she also... Like, she did legitimately read the book there, and uh, for those who don't know, it is about pirates. She loves pirates, so <laughs> she definitely uh, read it and reviewed it, uh, and it was removed, I think, really quickly, too, but I think it might have been, on that side of things, the reason why it was a lot quicker might have been because uh, I was logged on on the same internet, so they might have been able to see that. I'm not too sure. Maybe the IP issue again. Yeah, Amazon knows. <laughs> <laughs> they figure it yeah. out somehow. But that was the first uh, first way that I went about there, and uh, since then I've kind of expanded a little bit. Um, I'm almost even going in order of uh, how I expanded on it. Uh, the next thing that I did was um, Goodreads. On uh, Goodreads, that you can put up giveaways for print copies of your book and so when i uh, put them up there i put in a little uh insert that i printed off and just put in there how like i would love it if they reviewed the book and that sort of thing and uh, i also made sure to uh, put in a gift card for amazon uh, so that they could purchase it the ebook as well because uh, as we were saying before, verified purchase reviews are more important than non-verified purchase reviews. Okay. And uh, another thing they found was gifting. You can't gift the book uh, or else it won't show up as a verified purchase review either. So that's why the gift card is definitely important. But then I'm guessing the gift card, you can't control exactly what they buy with it. They might buy your book, but they might not. Yeah, there's definitely... A, a little bit of trust there that you have to a bit of trust <laughs> give <laughs> towards that, but uh, you know, relying on the kindness of strangers, as it were. Um, mm. Just from Goodreads, I think I've gotten probably five or more reviews. I believe not just from. If I may ask, is that five reviews on top of? If I may ask, how many giveaways? did you do so what what's the conversion rate there more or less uh it's not just uh giveaways i think from the giveaways i maybe got a few like i've had several giveaways and i think i got uh maybe three to five from the giveaways over all of my books and i've given away like several copies of each so it might be like 20 percent <laughs> just off the top of my head, I haven't really looked at the numbers. I probably should, but <laughs> but I've also uh, anyone who has rated it on Goodreads, like just given a star number. Um, okay. I've also found success doing that, just contacting them and saying like, "Hey, thanks for the rating there. Would you mind doing a review uh, and offering like the next book in the series?" as incentive mm. um goodreads doesn't really like that side of things they do warn against it because the user could flag it as spam but i still do it I can. <laughs> <laughs> still yeah don't. yeah well there you go if, if you're courteous and you're friendly about it and you're not nagging people then i think yeah go yeah ahead. just you know one message if they don't reply don't harass them that sort of thing just <laughs> be nice and kind of give that incentive as well it uh, incentivizes them as it were i don't really have a better word for it but <laughs> That's perfect yeah word. and uh, it is a little hit or miss because as i mentioned uh, sometimes they don't respond but um 
you want to try all avenues of that. Um, one thing that I haven't really tried uh, very much is like uh, bloggers or even again on Goodreads, there's Goodreads groups who do reviews. I haven't really done that yet so much, but uh, that can definitely be a way to uh, get a little bit more exposure. And on the blogging side of things, the bloggers would even post it on their blog. So depending on the traffic there, that could increase uh, traffic to your book and everything like that. So that's definitely a good way uh, to work on that. And the biggest advice that I've seen is just basically asking for reviews in your book itself, too. So, yeah, uh, it's proven that if you ask people to do something, they're more likely to do it. And, I mean, if they don't do it, then what have you really lost, right? Exactly. <laughs> so putting in the back of the book there, uh, before I used to do it just in the about the author section, just like a little blurb at the end mm -hmm. in text only. Uh, but what I've been trying recently is making it its own page. And uh, I won't say what picture I used, but I, I used like a funny, I photoshopped together kind of a funny picture uh, to put in there and just like asking for the review and uh, same thing, I incentivized it. I said, hey, if you like this one, I'll give you the next one for free if you review it. And uh, I've only had it up for uh, maybe a couple weeks now and somebody has already uh, reviewed it and emailed me about it. Nice. So it's, it's already paid off. And even just one more review, if you get one more review and you don't have to pay anything in to do it, I say do it. Exactly. This is uh, one of those pieces of advice that's um, so simple and obvious that I don't think many people miss yeah. it. You know, just ask <laughs> if you want to review, just ask in the, at the end of the book. Yeah, <laughs> and don't be wary about doing it. Like, I know that some people have kind of that aversion to it, but it's like you have everything to lose not getting reviews. So... Mm. You definitely want to get more of them. <laughs> and hopefully it'll increase the positive ones that you get too, since it's at the end of the book rather than at the beginning of the book. <laughs> yeah. Although you could probably ask at both points. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I just like it at the end there because chances are if somebody didn't like it, they're not going to finish it and then they won't even see that. So... <laughs> So preferably if they didn't like it, then don't encourage them. For yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably wise. And there are, uh, there are definitely a couple more uh, don'ts when it comes to reviews as well. Uh, I think uh, you had a couple of things there. Oh, of course. Yeah, now that we're talking about reviews, there's one option, and I use the term lightly, uh, People sometimes consider paying for reviews. There are services that allow you to do this. And um, my best advice on this would be don't. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't pay for reviews, guys. Just, just don't do it. Um, there was a while ago, there was that whole scandal with John Locke. Oh, yeah. How he sold his million ebooks. I was actually going to mention him. People in... <laughs> Exactly. People endorsed him. They said, this is cool. Look at what he did. And in the end, it turned out he simply paid for reviews mm. um, to have a whole bunch of them. What I would say, the lesson to take away from this is reviews do work. He did end up selling a million ebooks, and that was because of mm -hmm. reviews. But the problem is how he got them. So... <laughs> yeah, really. If you go about, mm. it really makes it like disingenuous and uh, puts a sour taste, I think, in the reader's mouth if they would end up doing that. Yes, when when this comes out, yes, it's completely capable of destroying your whole brand. Um, I I wouldn't go that route. Um, like I said, the only silver lining is knowing that reviews do work. You just need to get them in a legitimate way. Um, 
there are definitely books out there that have thousands upon thousands of legitimate reviews, which is, you know, um, in that same vein, um, as we said before, ugh, don't get family to do them, uh, write reviews for you, even though they are legitimate and they are perfectly above board, that's not how it will look to Amazon mm -hmm. and to other people that might come along. So if you can avoid family reviews. Yeah, in um, most of these cases, they'll just get removed eventually anyway, and like I've had that happen to me. So yeah, so it's um, strangely enough, I've got one review from my uh, sister on my book, and it hasn't caused any problems. But uh, well, now that you mentioned might it, help with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now that I mentioned Amazon's going to find out. <laughs> <laughs> what helps with that, I think, is there can be no IP issue because she's in a different country entirely. Oh, okay. So, yeah. A little harder there. Um, <laughs> yeah, I dare them to find you know any links between us. <laughs> <laughs> but, and then finally, there's another option that people sometimes look at, and that's to get all, other authors and to, to exchange reviews. Um, this one is a it's a bit more of a gray area. It's not like the other two where it definitely will be a problem. Mm -hmm. You can do it, um, but chances are they might be removed anyway as well. Amazon kind of, they have their ways to find out. Yeah. And they also don't like review exchanges, which kind of makes sense because there's incentive to, you know, be dishonest in your review when you do that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll give you a five-star review if you give me a five-star review. It's... Uh, there's incentive. You might think you are being perfectly honest, but Amazon doesn't know that. Yeah, and the reader doesn't either. Um, yeah. I don't really have much research on it, but uh, I don't imagine, even on the reader side of things, they might uh, might not like it if they find out that a whole bunch of those reviews are just exchanges. Uh, mm. But again, I don't really have much data to back up on it. My Myself, personally, I don't see too much of a problem with it. Uh, definitely, we might be a little bit more generous with the star rating. But, I mean, <laughs> we are authors. If we see grammar mistakes and stuff like that, we are going to point them out. We might not necessarily put that in the review, but, you know, maybe tell the other author, just, you know, get those fixed. <laughs> you know, give them a little... Yeah, definitely. So there's, there's advantages to uh, exchanging what you could say is just reading each other's books and maybe giving constructive feedback, but then it becomes more like a crit group. Yeah. Almost like a crit exchange, which is something else. Maybe just leave it to having more beta readers. Yeah, exactly. For our authors. <laughs> and I think, uh, I think depending on when this comes out there, I might actually have another, um, another video about beta readers. So, uh, stay tuned for that or, um, uh, if it's already out there, go check that out, where I, we talk about the importance of that as well. Awesome. So on the topic of reviews and exchanging and everything, um, we want to talk about a bit about what do you do when you get a bad review. There's a lot of advice about this going around, and uh, what can you tell us about that? Well, like it's always the most common advice, but it is the, probably the best advice. Don't engage. Don't, uh, you know, you might take it personally there, but don't try to really do anything with that person who does the does the bad review. Um, like there's even a study on uh, Unbounce.com where they say that even having a few bad reviews. Uh, they won't really impact sales all that much. Like if you have like an overwhelming majority of bad reviews, then they'll start to. But just a few, it just it uh, brings legitimacy to even just the rest of the reviews. So don't think immediately that bad reviews are bad. There's definitely uh, some feedback that you might want to take from that, uh, but they're not immediately going to affect you. Uh, having that wide range of different reviews, uh, in the end, the star number is not going to matter as much because it's more about the content 
of the review and the like emotional tone of it. So if the tone is positive and uh, say the words used and the linguistic style is similar to the person who's reading it, then that's going to be more important even than if it's a four or five star. Like the difference between a four and five star is not going to be much. It's more about that positivity and that sort of thing. So even on the side of a three-star review, like there's a three-star review that I have in my book, and um, throughout the the whole thing, he he's basically praising how he like he was up all night reading it, but the ending he really hated, <laughs> and that's why he gave it that uh, three stars. So like definitely a like it's unfortunate that he didn't really like the ending there. But he's really positive about the rest of the book, so it yeah, feels which is yeah, good. It feels like people would even be kinda intrigued about it, like, can it really be that bad? And they might buy it because yeah. of that. <laughs> exactly. That's perfectly something I would do, just to say you know, he says the ending is just such a break with the rest of it. I must see how this is you know, what does he mean? Yeah. <laughs> and do I agree? Yeah. And uh, as we were saying before there, like, don't engage. Don't uh, try to talk to them. Like, even if you're just, you know, going to say, like, hey, thanks type thing, like, it, it might be better just to not put anything. Uh, because with the way things are these days with social media and stuff like that, like, you can even just see it on, uh, if you have Facebook, on your Facebook wall. And people who are... Uh, having these bad customer relations or customer service relations, that sort of thing, they go viral and yeah. it just basically puts a, a bad name to, uh, to your brand. And it might even just bring even more negative reviews because people will just go on there and just blast it with negative reviews. Like have happened, uh, I've seen it tons of times with like, uh, restaurants like Yelp. And uh, stuff like that, they get uh, just lambasted with negative reviews because they were uh, bad to customers and even worse on the social media side of things. Yeah, that's the last thing you want. It's a, it's a war with the internet. <laughs> that's something you do not win. Yeah. So just try to take it as a positive. And if you know, they talk about... Uh, grammar and that sort of thing and you know go back and try and re rework it if they talk about like the dialogue uh, being weak or the descriptions uh, overly descriptive then you know go back and just tweak it a little bit and uh, as we were saying before update it and if you get better reviews later on then those are going to be weighted more after and pretty soon those bad reviews won't even matter Exactly. It'll just be part of your growth as an author, mm -hmm. which is never a bad thing. And uh, I think as we were saying before as well, like uh, you can even tell Amazon if you've updated it. Sometimes they won't uh, send it out to customers, but sometimes they will send an email out and let them know, like, hey, this was updated. And maybe that person who gave you a bad review or who even didn't say finish it, they might go back and read it and they'll see like, Hey, wow, this is a lot better now and actually read through it. And then they'll give you a positive review. Who knows? Great. And you'll be known as the author that actually listens to yeah. his readers opinions. You know, that's, that's also something. Yeah. If you antagonize someone though, they're less likely to yeah. come back <laughs> and try it again. Right, so exactly. people respond to positivity more. Definitely true. <laughs> so, Ethan, on the subject of reviews, now are you going to go back and put some of this advice <laughs> into play? <laughs> I will definitely have to. Um, I must admit I haven't given it all the attention it needed, but I have taken some of your advice. Uh, just this week, I actually contacted uh, one of the people on Goodreads and just that gave a star rating to my book. And I was just thanking the person for, you know, that and being all polite and asked 
is it um, possible to get a review for this? And it actually turned out pretty great. She agreed, and who knows? Well, that's <laughs> great, yeah. Maybe uh, someday in the future we can revisit this and see kind of what panned out as well and uh, exactly. get some more, uh, hopefully not anecdotal evidence <laughs> with regards to these <laughs> suggestions. Exactly. So, uh, audience, why don't you let us know what uh, you've done to get more reviews and uh, if you have any tips or tricks uh, to get more people to read before having too many reviews there. And uh, maybe we can share those as well on a future episode of the Second Drafts podcast. And uh, once again, thank you for joining us. Uh, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on everything you need to write, edit, and publish your way. And let us know what you'd like to see from us in a future podcast. See you next time. Okay. Cheers, guys. Do you want to support production of this YouTube series? Visit www.patreon.com slash and become a patron today.